another edition of A Delicious Mess from the Chuckatuck Branch Library in Suffolk, Virginia. I'm Missy Lisa, and today we're going to learn about cake decorating and make a cake that looks like a book with Miss Sasha Goldberg. So, the evolution of modeling chocolate that I was talking about, so you have chocolate, right? And yeah. then they started stripping out the cocoa butter because they wanted cocoa, right? What do you do with the cocoa butter? One of the things that they did is they make white chocolate. And white chocolate is a confection made of cocoa butter, sugar, and milk solids, and usually some kind of like vanilla flavor. And, but cocoa butter is really difficult to work with. So the next thing they made was compound chocolate. And compound chocolate is chocolate, is cocoa, is a mixture of cocoa, sugar, and then some other kind of fat, like palm fat or something that's less finicky. And because it doesn't behave like cocoa butter and it melts at a higher temperature, it doesn't have that nice mouth feel that we associate with chocolate. And it doesn't like, you know, you put chocolate in your mouth, it kind of fills your mouth with flavor because it's all just melting into your mouth and everything. And it's got the fat that carries all these flavors and whatnot. So, so you have compound chocolate. And then somebody came up with the, I think rather brilliant idea of mixing milk solids, sugar, and this other fat. And thus you get candy melts. And uh, or what they call, um, some people will still call it, um, not well, some people have heard of compound chocolate, but it isn't, right? Because there's actually no chocolate in it at all. There's no cocoa butter, there's nothing. But it acts like chocolate, and we use it in the same way that we use chocolate. And so when you make a mixture of um, that and corn syrup, you get what they call modeling chocolate. And modeling chocolate can either be made out of um, um, chocolate and corn syrup or candy melts or some other like chocolate substitute. So I make most of my modeling chocolate out of Wilton candy melts and corn syrup. And you can, it acts like you can treat it like fondant in a lot of ways, and it um, it's colorable, but um, but it's it's very fat. It's got a lot of fat in it, so you can't you can put color. You can add food coloring into it, but you can't paint it like I was doing with that board, and you can do with fondant. You can't do that with this because it just beads up. So book pages are usually white, right? And um, so I, I would use, if I was making a little, little like decorative piece, I would use um, white. Try to get the whitest that you can use. Even fondant, typically, even white fondant is not, is often not white. Um, Wilton's fondant is pretty white, but it's also just dreadful. <laughs> it's just the worst tasting stuff. Uh, but it is accessible to people. And modeling chocolate is accessible because all it is is either candy melt or you can use chocolate chips and corn syrup. When I make this modeling chocolate, I use uh, one part corn syrup to five parts chocolate and I do it by weight so like a bag of my of um, candy melts is 12 ounces mm -hmm. which is 340 grams and I add 70 grams of corn syrup and I don't know what that is in ounces but it's uh, probably about two and a half ounces so so we've got our little guy just gonna anything. All right, so here's our book, and we're going to make our pages. So modeling chocolate is when it's 
to say when it's dry is kind of the wrong terminology. When it is, um, let me bring the blade that I wanted. As you let it sit, it hardens, right? The heat from your hands goes away. But even over the course of like a day or so, it just settles more and it gets harder. And it gets more brittle. So modeling chocolate is a little more brittle. But this is fine. So we're going to make pages. This is our uh, pages. And now, what do we cover it in? So I don't have too many options. I just brought pink. Sorry about that. But you can, like I said, you can color pink. And this is like a marble that I like where you get, um, you add a little bit of white to it. And, um, and the more you roll it out, the more it fades, but you can always just add more white. Or like if you had um, purple or some other color that you thought would go good with it, you could do that too. So what we're going to do is take a certain amount. I think that's enough. And we're going to roll this out and just be make the cover. something like this sometimes I'll just like this warm it up in my hand right. and just try to press it so this because the paint because it's so thick it's a little bit hard all right so that's one all right and if you even wanted to, you could like imprint a little like something for a title. But for a little um, decoration, like something you put, I wouldn't bother. This is this is what I would probably do right here. Except that would make it thinner, to be honest. All right. So that is book one. Okay. So Rice Krispie Treats and Candy Melts, super delicious. Really good. I mean, excellent. And the Candy Melts... Um, they help preserve it too. So, and, and the candy melt tastes better on it than modeling chocolate. But if you don't have, you don't feel like dealing with it or just you're in a hurry, you can use modeling chocolate. The thing that you have to do is, and see, like you can see, I'll, I'll work with this side, is that it's, um, it's rough, right? And you don't want that rough texture to show through your book. So if you soften up some modeling chocolate and kind of smoosh it in there, and then you can like kind of go like that to, to get it nice and flat, then you have a surface that you can work with. So this is real modeling chocolate. This is, unlike the candy melt, which is like just a really small amount of corn syrup, if you start adding a lot of corn syrup to it, it gets very soft and, and pretty unmanageable. Like I said, I like um, one part, one basically 20% of the chocolate. I take 20% of that, and that's the amount of corn syrup that I add when candy melts. But when you're having real modeling chocolate made with real chocolate, the standard is uh, two parts chocolate to one part corn syrup. So this is like, I usually make about a pound at a time, so that's about five ounces of corn syrup by weight, not by volume, to about ten ounces of chocolate. And with this one, you can have actually almost like, like a leathery 
kind of. Um, you know how s nice books can be bound in leather? So you can have that kind of uh, vibe with this. luster dust and this is the alcohol that I was talking about and that's probably the only real way you're going to color this and you can oops I got a little, little aggressive there you can actually like color the whole thing like if you wanted to make it gold you can you, you need you need a fair amount um, the taste is not overly intrusive but it's, you know, like I said, you, you would need a fair amount of this to, to, you could see, you get kind of a little bit of gold, but to get like a solid stripe, which now I feel compelled to do, um, and and then it does come off on your hands a little bit, can, so... And I just wanted to like, all right, so there. If you wanted to, you, you know, gold isn't the color that you want. Luster dusts come in a lot of colors. Now, again, you're, you're talking about, you're working on um, a very dark surface. So you're not going to get, um, there's, you, you know, you, you're not gonna, you, you'd struggle to make it a light color. Roll this out. So, this is, this is ganache. Right. I prefer to make a book cake out of um, out of ganache, out of chocolate cake and ganache. You can make a cake that's vanilla. You can make a cake with buttercream. But the advantage of ganache is that it stays once it hardens. It's hardened even at room temperature. Whereas if you make like an Italian meringue or a Swiss meringue buttercream, it, it, if it's room temperature, it's just made of butter, basically. Right. So the biggest issue you run into constantly with these things, come on, is that you don't want chocolate on your pages. And I struggle with that constantly. And it's just, I am a little bit tolerant to chocolate on my pages, but um, you do want to try to get it as little as possible. So I'm gonna get this guy. So normally, like I said, probably stick this in the freezer. I stick it in the freezer for a couple of minutes and it um, gets hard. And normally you worry about condensation with cakes, but we don't have to worry about condensation here because the condensation, if we, if we, if we had like taken it out of the freezer and put it on, because the condensation, um, it, um, it helps the fondant stick. Okay. All right, so this is, yeah, this is fine. I just wanted to pin this out a little bit. This is a mixture of corn syrup and water. You could just use water. You could just use, corn syrup's a little thick. Uh, some people use piping gel. Remember I saying there's all sorts of things that people use to adhere a fondant? All right, so we're going to try to find our nicest page. Nicest side. I think this side is a little bit straighter. Normally, I use cake boards to help me um, frost my cakes, but um, I didn't on this one, so... So what is in the water? It's corn syrup. Corn syrup. 
Yeah, just like, I just like thin it like, well, this is a little thinner than I normally do, like 50-50. Just get a little, just to make it a little sticky. Yeah, because it really will, you know, it's sugar, right? This is all basically sugar, and sugar is very hygroscopic, and it just, you know, it just sucks up water from the atmosphere, and it adheres to everything, right? If you put this, I promise you, if you left this on the table and you came back a few hours later, you probably have to like pry it up. So I've already rolled this out and I've cut the um, one flat side. And please, this has got to fit because I did measure. Oh, it will, yay! It helps a little bit if you put some barrier between the cake. And, um, and where you're going to cut. And here we have, so I, because I like to sort of go for that verisimilitude of, um, you know, the, the of it not adhering on the back. So I like to cover my back. It's not seen, so I don't worry. See, this is what I do. I don't worry about getting it perfect, and I make it as thin as I can because, um, again, I don't really it's like fine. fondant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm just going to make a really thin piece, and... Um, I got another piece of paper to help. Try to clear this off a little bit. And there are times when I would think, well, you know, if I was like, I don't know, if I was doing this for some customer, if I was making cakes professionally or something like that, I would cover the top too. I would just cover the whole thing in white so that I never had to worry about the chocolate peeping through because it's just, you know, you know, you can see there's just chocolate, right? There's just little bits of chocolate everywhere. And it's not, you know, it's not really attractive. So, you know, if you put a, just a real thin cover of fondant over this, the whole thing would be covered in and you would never have to worry about it. All right, so here we are. And this is the cake, right? Now, if we had, like I said, in the refrigerator, refrigerator, freezer, you might be able to get these corners a little sharper. And you do want them to be sharper because the book corner, book pages are, are sharp, right? And, um, but you do the same thing that we did with the little tiny books. You know, you, you pull the, whatever source you have to make your, um, your um, lines, you do. And one thing you can do is use, um, dip your knife in, um, in shortening. Helps a little bit so it doesn't pick up the fondant and get, because the fondant gets really uh, gritty on the knife. And it's, so you just put a little shortening and then just, you know, the same thing. It's easier to score when it's soft. So what I would normally do is I put the fondant on. I mean, I don't do like a lot of these, but I put the fondant on, score my lines, and um, and then just put it aside. My, my, like I said, my preference is overnight, but even just a couple of hours gives you a much stabler surface to attach the cover. So you want the cover to be just a little bigger, not too much bigger, and of course it has to wrap around the bottom. Alright, now with this in here, you can just go ahead and look and you don't have to do Alright, so this is, yeah, like six and a half by not a bad size. 
And this is like really pink. <laughs> really pink. So we're going to Another thing about modeling chocolate is it keeps for a long time. I mean, in a sense, it never really goes bad. Like, it doesn't mold or anything like that. But it does become more crumbly and um, harder to manage. But within, like, if you make it, like, a couple of weeks before you need it or months even, months even, it is it's nice and stiff and, and very uh, sturdy. Whereas, like, you can see how soft this is. I, I made this yesterday. <laughs> Last night. This is an eighth of an inch. And that's about the minimum thinness you could use. You know, you want to much as you can start out with the, um, the shape that you want it to be in. <laughs> Just the one thing that is always true is you have start with more than you think you'll need. It's so much easier to cut away excess than just to have to re-roll the whole thing because you don't have quite enough. I mean, there's actually all these calculators online to help you um, to help you determine how much fondant you need for a cake, but they're not very useful for something like this. is there is an indentation where the, um, I don't know, I don't know exactly what it's there for, but you have that indentation. And really you just need, I guess you can use like a skewer or anything. Like, let me use this. You don't want it to be too terribly thick, but you do as much as possible want to have something that's straight. All right, so it's hard to do it by hand, to draw it by hand, although you can do that. And I just sort of wing it. And you want to do this pretty soon because the, um, because it, you know, it just, uh, it's easier to do this when everything is soft. Normally, I'd kind of go over this with that fondant tool that I left at home. That's all right. I'm going to tuck this guy in. So now you have basically the cover of the cake. And all you need now is the um i mean of the book so like this board i think that's actually kind of interesting and i might just leave it even though i don't really care for the colors and i say when you handle these boards sometimes like if this one had been a little bit drier it would have been more um steady so this is like slipping a little bit so just be careful when you put your hands under it so it's mdf and yeah, so this is MDF. This one is really this thickness that is typically used when you use this kind of and material. Did you is that fondant on it? What well, is it's fondant. It's a mixture of fondant and gum paste. Oh. Okay. So just because I had stuff I needed, I didn't need. A lot of people use fondant. I like to. If I'm going to use gum paste, I like to. Um, I mean, if I'm going to use fondant, I like to use Tylos. 
You know that the CMC, the the powder you get. Yeah. Okay, so you can get it. Um, it's called either Tylos or Tylo powder or CMC, which stands for um, cellulose. No wait, carboxymethyl cellulose. Okay. It just thickens and hardens the fondant so that it acts more like gum paste. Um, see, like right now, I can get my thumbnail into that. Yeah. But not so much this one because this one has been so you can, but you really have to work at it. Obviously, you wouldn't do that where <laughs> you know where you thought you were going to see it. Also, there's no point in decorating beyond you know a a, a two inch border again because it won't be seen and you're just using up your materials. So you have to kind of have the right size. Oh, and this time you're going to have to measure. Well, yeah. So what you don't want a line on the cake, right? On the book cover. So you do want to um, maybe you, know, you could use something like this, right? And then. Decide where you want your title. You should just put it in the top. And you can, you know, sort of push this up against the side to sort of get a, a line that's straight within the, you know, relative to your book. All right, so I think cake will work as a title. Unless you have a title you'd prefer. Cake sounds good. <laughs> And these are also not something that you can get. Um, I did have to order these. But I like these because you can cut out with them, but you can also emboss. So. Well, as hard as it was for me to imprint this, um, you know, once my hand starts sitting on this and it's um, in the heat, even with the gloves, the heat will um, go through, and you just, uh, let's see. Another thing, of course, is that it doesn't have to be upright. You're just filling in a shape, right? So you can turn it however you want to, to make it easy for you to do the work. We'd like to thank Ms. Sasha Goldberg for going through a tutorial on how to make a book. That, no, a cake <laughs> that looks like a book. And hopefully other people around Suffolk are going to learn to decorate their cakes too. It was really fun. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Karen.